Hi and good day everyone out there. Um, this is Mark Wolf at Emergency Reporting and welcome to Virtual Thursday. This is our third installment for the year of 2018 and we are uh, doing a presentation with a partner organization of ours, a first do. I got a couple things to uh, go over first here. Um, the first is that uh, we want to remind everybody we do have these Virtual Thursday trainings on the uh, first and third Thursdays of every month. Today, we're going to have uh, myself, I'm going to be hanging loose here. We have Andreas Huber. He's a CEO of First Do Size Up as our main presenter. Um, we want to also remind you that uh, we do have online training available. You can arrange for in three hour blocks. We can uh, arrange for any type of topics and materials you need to meet your needs. We do also provide a lot of on-site trainings that can be provided at your location from one of our uh, regional trainers. And uh, additionally, we have regional and national training academies that we present throughout the year. And I believe uh, the total number for the year is going to be eight of those this year. We do have one coming up next week down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We have one coming up March 13th through 15th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. May 15th through 17th in Seattle, Washington, and June 19th through 21st in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I understand now they have the National Training Academy scheduled in July, and that's going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So uh, you can take advantage of those opportunities as well. Those are very intensive trainings over three days. We go from 8, 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 p.m., and we jam them packed full of information for you. And now I'm going to switch our presenters over to Andreas and, and Rami from First Do. And I should uh, have them switched over. Perfect. There we go. Awesome, guys. Take on over. I'll uh, meet myself and monitor questions then. That's, that's great, Mark. Thanks so much uh, for the intro. And hello, everybody. My name is Andreas Huber, and I'm here with Rami El Chifani. Uh, together, we are the CEO and, and head of product for First Do. We're really looking forward to taking you guys through this webinar today, uh, where we're going to focus on the integration and connector between the First Do platform and emergency reporting. Uh, it's really a, actually an, a quite exciting um, enhancement to emergency reporting as well to our as well as to our platform. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of focus in on three core areas. The first is going to be residential size up. Uh, the second is going to be how can we make fire prevention data and occupancy data inside ER more accessible and valuable in the field for operations. And lastly, we're going to touch on our, uh, the mapping component for our uh, operational crews. So in terms of agenda, we're going to uh, about 30 to 45 minutes and We'll go through the presentation, we'll, a quick introduction on our mission as an organization, the problem that our solution is focused on solving, and then we're going to frame how that actually works, which will set the stage nicely for uh, the actual product demo, which Rami's going to take us through. All attendees are going to be on mute uh, during the presentation, but please feel free, any questions you have, send them through the chat function, and we'll do our best to answer them as we go. Uh, and if there's any that we do miss, we'll be sure to... Um, you know, answer them when we open it up at the end of the presentation. So our mission is very straightforward. Uh, at First Do, we're focused on helping to solve uh, the problem around never having injury, ending first responder injuries due to a lack of information. And that's because this problem is, is massive. It's something that challenges fire departments around the country of all sizes across all geographies. And really, you know, from our experience working with our clients and our research, the problem can really be broken down into three main components uh, when we think about sort of the traditional approach to this. And the first is from a community risk perspective. Uh, it's really about all structures, not just our commercials, but our residentials as well. You know, statistically, most of our injuries take place and most of our calls happen at residentials. So we can think about this as sort of this black hole of information or a large information gap. You know, when we go on our residential calls, more often than not, all we get is the type of incident and the location of the call. Um, but there's a lot more that we could have. And so sort of the second component is 
commercial structures, right? That, those are the only ones that we can actually go out and, and visit and do our pre plans or our inspections on. It's not like we can just knock on someone's door, you know, a residential home and, and inspect their home. So that's what we're left with on the commercial side. But because it's time consuming, it can be expensive and just physically difficult to visit all of your commercial structures on some sort of a regular frequency so that our information is up to date. Oftentimes we have pre plans on a subset of all of our commercials. And then the last point that's worth focusing on is what format and how accessible are our pre plans actually? You know, more often than not, they are complex drawings. Um, they're, you know, blocks of text or PDFs up, uploaded against CAD or as premise notes, hard to keep up to date and certainly hard to consume when you only have a few minutes during an incident. So what we found is likely you only have truly actionable or helpful information on maybe your second alarms are greater or on your high hazards. So in contrast, what we strive for in our partnership with emergency reporting and our clients is to provide actionable information on every call for every structure you respond to, including your residentials. And so from a solution perspective, the way it actually works is our system understands where a lot of this critical information lives. So great imagery in, within Google, uh, permits, test inspections sitting inside the building department, great property data uh, inside the tax appraiser or assessor records, GIS, social media, and then of course, your occupancy, your pre-plan, your inspections, all within your records management system, emergency reporting. And what's happening then is programmatically, that information from those different silos gets brought into one central cloud-based location where we then give you two more tools to collect information. First is the pre-plan tool, which, is, which helps you collect data in the field, as well as a tool you can use for your mapping. And the second is Community Connect. And this is actually a publicly facing um, web application that you can make available to residents, facility managers, commercial business owners to communicate in relevant critical information back to the fire department. And all that great information is available anytime, anywhere, of course, on any connected device. So how, how do you access first do? I mean, how do people actually use this? So in a whole bunch of different ways. And the first is through the responsive web application. So by simply setting up a shortcut, either on your desktop or on a tablet, really any connected device, with one tap, you get the critical information you need. Because it's fully responsive, it automatically adjusts the size of your screen so that the experience is always uh, consistent. On your MDT, for those of you with MDTs um, or running mobile CAD software, we can actually embed first do right within mobile CAD. We can also share information uh, coming from first do right into your mobile CAD Esri base map as a layer in a couple different ways. And then with a simple click, you're able to access first do again right within mobile CAD. Um, we have a host of mobile applications as well across iOS, which we call our, and, and Android, which we call our mobile responder app, giving you all the information that, that you're looking for right within a mobile application, um, giving the ability to navigate with turn by turn, as well as your quick snapshot of the incident and status. In. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Rami, and we're going to get set to uh, actually show you the product. Thanks, Andreas. Um, so what we're going to talk about today, everyone, we're going to we're going to go through um, sort of the concept, the context of first do as related to emergency reporting and some of that great information data that's valuable in emergency reporting and how we can take it out, make it more you know more visual and more usable out in the field. So all that great data that's sitting there, we're sort of un unlocking the value of it. Um, but what we'll first start with is talking about residential size up, and we'll show you an example of. You know, real address uh, in California um, of uh, based on publicly accessible information data. How we can, with one tap, with one but uh, you know, tap of a single shortcut or a button, we can have a, a size up on a residential structure. And then we'll then we'll talk about you know how we go out and collect data and put data into emergency reporting, and then how that flows through um, for some of our commercial structures as well. And then we'll finish up with the concept of using first do to take it that one last step. How do we then not only visualize the great information from pre-plan in terms of icons and alerts and 
you know, uh, this size of story, which we'll talk about in a moment, but how can we then take it and then map it? So now we have, you know, sort of close the loop. Um, we have true sort of mapping data within first do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just move over to um, the the website. And I'll, as Andreas mentioned, we're just we're just in a shortcut here, right? We're in a, a URL, demo.firstdosizeup.com, and it's taking us to you know this this web page. And this web page is fully res responsive, so you can create this shortcut, which obviously won't be demo because it's not a demo account. But you can create this shortcut and you can put it on any device. Uh, you can put it within a link within your mobile CAD with the title of the button called size up. I mean, you can do anything with that link. And as soon as you tap it, it's gonna take you to the most recent incident, which you see at the top left corner here. So this uh, this sort of blue, um, uh, you know, uh, rectangle here is is the, the selected dispatch that we're on. So you have a dispatch slider up the top, and now we're responding to this residential structure, and we're, you know, we're on this incident, and we can easily switch between different incidents. And what you see straight away is this map view have the ability to collapse it here. But this map view gives us just, hey, this is your aerial view. And on a residential structure, you might see hydrants and maybe nothing else. We'll talk about pre-planning on residential you know, a little bit later, but generally you might not see a ton of other information in these residential areas. Maybe, like we said, just hydrants because that's a layer that's available. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse this aerial view by clicking you know, hide aerial view. And then what we're gonna see here is, um, a bit more information sort of exposed. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, you know, obviously we have things like call notes, access to the call notes on the fly coming direct from CAD, but two really important things I want to talk about are the size of story and these alert tiles. What the, those two elements are doing, they're looking at all this information coming from those public data sources and because they're residential, it's pretty much coming from municipal data sources like your assessor and your billing department. It's flowing into these buckets down below, right? Assessor, building department, maybe other government agencies. And instead of having to go down and really sift through all permits, property, inspection, all that sort of stuff, what we're actually doing is bringing it up and translating it into an easy to read size up narrative or story, and then alert tiles that are configurable to what you guys care about. And both of those things you can sort of customize to fit in with your standard operating procedures and guidelines. So let's talk about the size up story to start. The size up story is this really easy snapshot that tells you things like, hey, what's the size of the structure? What's the building type? Uh, when was it built? And is there anything I need to be really concerned about here? So now I'm responding to a residential structure where I would have just had the incident type and the location, and instead now I'm getting this you know, uh, easy snapshot which tells me that I need to be concerned about potential gas fuel and the fact that there's a solar panel on the roof or potential solar panel considerations at the structure. There's also something in there about the uh, required flow rate, and I'll just talk about that when we get to the alert tiles. Related to the alert tiles, very similar to the size of story, right? One, thing, one other thing to mention before I get into the alert tiles, that size of story can be sent as a text message, it can be read over the radio, you can even press this play button here and the system will read it off to you. So every single possible way you can, you can think about getting that snapshot, you guys can receive it in a way that makes sense. And when we get into emergency reporting and start adding data, you'll see how you know, really valuable that size of story is. Now when we get to these alert tiles, you know, I'm responding to a residential structure fire, uh, for example. Yeah, I want that really quick snapshot, but I also want really visual alerts to tell me if there's something I need to care about. For example, you know, uh, as we're approaching or, you know, um, things like there's a swimming pool in the back. Say I'm advancing hose line across the backyard. It's the middle of the night. Uh, there happens to be a swimming pool, and I know that straight away so I can inform the necessary people. Um, we know there's a solar panel on the roof, and again, either coming from the assessor or from the building department. In this case, we have solar panel permits, and based on that, this tile presents itself. So as that data changes, as things, as permits become expired or information starts to sort of change related to that property, these alert tiles will change because they're, they're dynamic. Even simple things like the fact that this is a residential structure. Um, this tile here is a really sort of, is a bit of a different one because this tile is actually a calculated field tile. 
right? So it, it can either come straight from things like emergency reporting that's already doing some of those calculations for you and present the tile, or our system can do some of those calculations itself. So say, for example, we have information on, you know, the, the uh, cubic um, uh, uh, size of the structure, we can start to calculate estimated flow rates based on certain, uh, you know, uh, calculations and formula. In this case, hey, based on the information that we have, we're calculating a really simple flow rate for this so that you know what the flow rate is for, say, 100% involved structure file. Um, so it's calculating it, and we're able to access that dynamically, and it's changing dynamically as sort of those things are changing in the system. So right now, we've had to do absolutely nothing, and we're presented with this snapshot on a residential structure, even with the ability to quickly access the street view, uh, roof image, which we sort of saw before, and if there's a property sketch or building uh, blueprint or anything like that that comes from the assessor, which a lot of assessors have, again, you're accessing it on this single screen. And if we're lucky, like we have with this property, we even have Google Place information. There's a home business here with a contact phone number, and you've got to access that information really quickly. So what we've seen here is your ability to get access to data on residential um, makes, you know, sort of rounds out the completeness of the data you have on every single structure. So let's move into, you know, away from the residential side into commercial. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to show a very similar sort of, you know, uh, format we just saw, you know, the, the dispatch slider, the map view, we have hybrids here because that's obviously coming through from, um, either can come straight through from emergency reporting, we can connect into, you know, Esri and GIS and bring those layers in as well. Um, but when I collapse this aerial view, you'll see, you know, similar information, uh, but just slightly tweaked because this is a commercial structure. It's like, hey, this is a large retail, um, there's warehouse and storage use, H HVAC uh, system in use, a bit of base level information and data, the fact that that is the Lowe's home improvement, and, you know, some information coming over from Google, which allows us to sort of get in touch when we need to. Now, this is the information you would have out of the box with the system. You'd get this because we're connecting into those multiple data sources, bringing them in, and present it in the right way. But you've also got this fantastic information either already sitting in emergency reporting, or as you go and you do your inspections and your pre-incident, um, pull up your pre-incident information, you know, you're, you're entering this information into emergency reporting, you want that to flow through as well. So think about this as your base level of data and information as you're responding. And now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to emergency reporting. And we're going to uh, have a look at one of the occupancies that's already sort of matched, which is the lows here. And I'm just going to edit. So let's let's imagine you know, as we're sort of starting, I'm going to sort of jump into two components here. We're going to start with from a fire prevention perspective. Let's assume that I'm on site and I'm, you know, uh, in the middle of a uh, – fire suppression system inspection. I'm going to start an inspection. I'm going to say this is now. That's a fire protection system. And I'm going to use the standard form. And let's just assume we've done everything we need to do from a checklist perspective. Uh, but at the end, we're going to say, hey, I'm not really happy. I've issued a citation. We can put in some inspection notes as well. Uh, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm just going to save that. So I'm on site here at the Lowe's, and I've said, hey, listen, they actually failed the fire protection system inspection, um, some things that we need to be concerned about. And I'm also, while I'm on site, I just want to update their emergency contact information. So let's just put in, uh, we'll just put in owner oh, no, now, and we'll say, i just put in all this information, why not, and save that. And now we have a contact there. So what we've done is we've gone to emergency reporting. We've, uh, we've done an inspection. Um, we've issued a citation for that inspection, and we've uh, created a, um, a contact um, you know, within emergency reporting as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into first do, and you know, we notice the tiles that we have here. We notice the size up story. And I'm just going to refresh this page. Right, we're going to see a couple of things change. I'll come back to that. I'll refresh it again for that 
um, that contact, you'll probably see it come across again. But what's really important is this failed uh, sprinkler um, violation. That tile was not there before. So what we've actually done is gone and done work within emergency reporting. But now because we've issued a violation during inspection or there's something that we care about, we've configured the alert tile to look for that. And now when I'm out in the field, I can see that there's some information I care about. And if I tap on that icon, it's going to tell me, hey, there was a fire protection system inspection dated at this time and the status is currently citation issued. Now, we can really easily say that if, if the inspection was done more than 60 days ago, I don't care about the tile, don't show it to me. Or if the status is not citation issued, it's resolved or another status, then again, don't show me that icon or alert and it would sort of disappear. So it's constantly refreshing the way the data looks in front of you based on those alert tiles. So a pretty, pretty important um, sort of aspect there of being able to bring in this information, being able to do it within emergency reporting, go about your job as a, um, you know, a fire marshal, everyone on your fire prevention team can go about doing the work that they usually do. But now we have the ability to access it from an operations perspective out in the field in a format that makes sense. That's great. And I might just add one thing. All of these tiles, um, you know, are totally customizable. And the system out of the box comes with hundreds of tiles that are sitting there waiting for certain conditions to exist. And so they're all completely dynamic. And um, when we go back and refresh the page, you'll actually now see um, another uh, tile pop up related to contacts. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, before we re refresh the page, I'm going to go and add some more data. So we've talked about fire prevention. How about um, occupancy related data or, you know, pre-planned data that we might capture? Now, this may be done by fire prevention uh, team. It may be done by your, your ops. You know, you may be collecting information in different ways. But let's assume that data sits within emergency reporting. When I click on my pre-plans, let's start putting in some information related to this structure. So, uh, Let's just start using, you know, let's say side A, side A, side B near entrance, gas shut off, rear of structure, electrical panel location. Let's also say it's at the rear of the structure. And uh, let's add some pre planned notes saying, uh, as an example, uh, emergency exit locked. And we're going to save that. And then let's also add chemical. Whatever it might be, and we'll say the location is roof. And save that. So what we're doing here is we're just going about, like we said, just our normal job of going and collecting information. We may have this data already within emergency reporting. Um, and again, just going to save that. And then going to jump over to fire protection systems, and then add this information about the FDC. That means 2.5 uh, inch. In combination uh, you know, structure, and and we'll save that also. Yeah, and we also have the ability to really to to add files um, straight into. Uh, actually, let's see if we can do that. All right. Let's see a sketch example if we have. Yeah, let's just put that one in for now. now that could be a pre-plan. Let's just assume that it is. And we add in that sketch. So I've gone in and added information to emergency reporting. Pre-plan information, fire protection system information as well, and also an additional file. And now I'm going to refresh the page. And we're going to see a couple of things change on the screen. Right. Um, there was that emergency contact information we saw before. 
right? So that just needed a couple of seconds to sort of refresh. But now we have our has and that, we have all these other alert tiles. And because, you know, we have sort of trying to bring across everything, um, it all comes into this, the system and sort of is captured in the right way. And let me just refresh that one more time, right? Just so the FDC comes across. Um, Files and images may take a little bit longer, but we'll refresh that in a second. I'll show you. But now, really quickly, a couple of things that happened. One is, you know, you see these alert tiles are now visualized. So we see FDC, and, you know, I, because we care about FDC information, I can tap it and it tells me information about the FDC. Um, information about hazmat as well, the fact that it's on the roof and the quantity, um, you know, the shut off and where it's located. Again, we're taking that great information, we're visualizing it, tying it into dispatch and making it accessible out in the field. We've also modified the size of the story to include the warning coming from RMS, right, the emergency exit block. So think about that. We can add warnings into, you know, uh, emergency reporting, and that can be not only exposed in first do, but it can be sent as a text message and come as not notifications on phones. It's a really valuable component for you guys to be able to communicate things that are happening, whether it's a violation or any other bits of information that you want to communicate straight through the size of story. We could have done the same thing with the violation for um, the fire protection system. We can say if that alert tile exists, show that in this uh, size of story. So you're, you're taking that information, you're making it consumable really in a way that you know, it makes a ton of sense when you're responding. And so, we've, you know, a whole bunch of information here. You can have codes for the fire alarm control panel. Again, easy access by tapping the icons or easy access within the size of story. What you will notice, however, is when I open up the aerial view is that, you know, there's nothing on the map, um, which makes complete sense because all we've done is said, here's, an F here's some FDC information take it up, bring it over to first do, show me an icon so I can tap the icon and so I can, without having to change tabs, it just shows me what I care about from an ops perspective. But what if I wanted to start to map some of that information, right? So you can actually use first do's pre-plan module, which is integ integrated in with um, uh, emergency reporting. And if I jump over to pre-plans, and I'm, you know, let's let's assume now I'm out in the field, and uh, if on every single device, any mobile device, whether I'm there for a routine inspection, um, whether we're on we're training, whether I'm there for for a current call, call or a false alarm, and now I want to be able to take some of that information that we have in sort of that static text form or you know icon form, and I want to now start to put it onto a map, right? So I'm going to show you our pre-plan module now, which is a module that's accessible again on every single device. I'm going to scroll down and show you this sort of map view. What you'll notice is there's nothing on the map there. We could easily come up here and drag and drop sort of industry um, uh, NFPA standard icons onto uh, the map. We can add hazmat as well. Uh, we could do that really easily. But what the system has already done for us is it said, hey, there's some you see the unmapped units down the bottom? There are some units that exist in emergency reporting that we've brought across, but now you're able to, you know, sort of with the tap of a, you know, drag and drop um, those units onto the map. So now, for example, we take the, you know, the gas shut off and we, we drop it over here. We're able to reduce the size of it if we want to. Uh, you'll see that it brings across the data from emergency reporting into the unit itself. Do the same thing with the electrical shutoff and reduce the size there. Uh, FDC on that side. Uh, I think we have some a Knox box as well. No information related to the Knox box, but we'll show you how you can add data into there as well. You can enter additional information to add some data there. And then, you know, the control panel, we'll just throw that at somewhere at the front, and it's there. Um, but you notice, so these are all sort of ground-related items, right? You notice the hazmat, however, was on the roof. So this was hazmat has material that was meant to be on the roof. What we have in first do is multi-level pre-planned capability. So you see here we have basement, ground, first, second, third. These are sort of 
levels that we've created before. And I can easily just say, hey, manage levels. And we haven't added a roof, so let's add a roof. And now we have a roof on the top here, right? So now if I wanted to, I could switch between all the levels. I'm on ground now, but I could easily go to roof. All the icons disappear because they're just associated with the ground. And now I can drag and drop, you know, the hazardous material, in this case gasoline, for whatever reason, is just sitting on the roof up here. And I can sort of uh, reduce that, uh, the size of that. Um, what I can also do if I, if I wanted to, I can add some more hazardous material. Uh, let's do that within the basement. So let's jump over to the basement and let's add some paints and solvents that sort of are sitting in the back over here. But in this case, because we have access to the ERG, I can do a, a lookup to the ERG and add that chemical. So let's say paints and solvents that are flammable. And generally, this would be captured with an emergency reporting um, and pushed one way into our system. And then you just drag and drop it on the map from a mapping perspective. But I just wanted to show you what happens when we tie in the UN number. I'm going to update that. Um, and then we want to talk about things like uh, building a comprehensive pre-plans. You know, what are the really important components? Well, how about things like uh, elevators and stairwells? So let's let's do that really quickly. Let's jump on and just you know go back to ground and let's just put in a couple of things like an elevator just to show you what the capabilities are. And again, a lot of this information will be coming from emergency reporting, and we're just helping you map it. But if you want to take it one step further, like be able to add, say, a you know a service elevator that goes ground all the way to the roof. Oh, let's say basement because it's a service elevator. We can actually select all of those levels and we can update. And let's say we wanted to add a stairwell, stairwell A, whatever that might be, and we'll call that stairwell A. Array, and we'll say that goes, you know, from ground, from ground all the way to third floor. It doesn't have any roof access and no basement access, and we'll update that. Right. So now we've created this sort of this pre-plan. We can attach images as well, or if the image is already there, they'd come across from emergency reporting. Then what I can do is I can do one of two things. I can either create. So if I just have the, the, from a permissions perspective, just have the ability to save as a draft, which really that's what create is, or I can create and publish, which pushes it straight through into and it being accessible out in the field. But if I press create and publish, what we've done is a couple of things. You know, we've brought that information over from emergency reporting, and now we've been able to, out on the field, map that data really quickly to sort of close the loop. And now when I expand this aerial view, I now have access to that great information data out in the field. So if I, let's turn on the map view, you can see I've got my shutoffs, FTC. I have, uh, you know, the stairwell over here in the elevator, right? And these icons, we can change them, change the color of them. Um, pretty easy to, to modify. Um, now, I can tap on any of these icons and again pulls that information across. So here again, that's just, that's emergency reporting data. But now it's on an icon on a map with its own lat long, right? So it's a really easy way for us to out in the field start to add you know the necessary data to make this visual on a map. But what if I wanted to see all of my levels at once? What if I wanted to not just switch between each level? I want to actually see. A sort of like a 3d view of the building I can do that because I've created these levels we have a stairwell we have the elevator which stretches from the basement to the roof and we know it's a service elevator if I tap on it it'll tell me hey yeah this is a service elevator I have hazmat on the roof and I have hazmat in the basement so if I tap on the, on the roof and you know I can get access to what information I care about related to that as this material and then again go to the basement and say hey I've also got hazmat up here in the basement we obviously, you know, when I collapse this, I can obviously get that, get to that hazmat by tapping the hazmat symbol. 
if we are connected straight to the ERG with one tap, you're able to access all the great information related to the code for the emergency response guide. So it's giving you access to all that great data because we've connected it um, to the emergency response guide. Um, so we can do that straight from emergency reporting as well. So what we've done is sort of close the loop on the data collection piece. So you were doing all this amazing stuff in emergency reporting and we're adding one more layer to map that data. By allowing us to map that information, it's making it more accessible out in the field as we respond and just, you know, sort of cancelling out the double work that's there. The final piece is you'll see that images come across as well. So if you guys are capturing images within emergency reporting, files, whatever you need to capture, you can store it centrally in the RMS. And we like to have emergency reporting as the source of truth for occupancy data, prevention data, you know, files, images, anything like that. You know, having emergency reporting as that base and foundation and us just be a representation of that out of the field is what makes it really powerful. Um, in terms of uh, how we can access the application, again, you can do it just from a uh, website like we're showing you here, um, and it's fully mobile responsive. So what that means is I'm going to just reduce the size of this and just reduce the screen, and you can see that it's sort of adjusted to the size of my screen, right? So I can collapse this, scroll down, and now it just looks like a mobile phone. And if I tap on anything, it's going to open it up as if it was a phone. So that mobile responsive piece that Andre has discussed, that's what that really means, is that you're able to access this on any device, even if it's just a website without the app. The final piece is that we do have the ability, you do have the ability to download an app. So if you've got iOS or Android, we do have an app that you can download on your mobile devices, whether it's tablet or iPhone. So I, I guess now might be a good time for us to sort of stop and see if there's any uh, questions about what we showed today uh, about the solution, um, you know, anything we we missed or anything else we can help with. So um, yeah, I think I think Mark, this might be a good time uh, to open it up for any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the presentation, guys. Quite impressive. Uh, when you you get me impressed like I am right now, you've uh, really. Uh, went above and beyond the call. It's, it's really nice. So we, we do encourage anybody out there that's visiting with us today for the session to uh, post up some questions in the uh, questions panel or uh, hit the chat. We're monitoring both of them right now. Um, while you're uh, considering doing that, I want to give a shout out to a few folks, names I recognize on our attendee list. First of all, I mentioned uh, hi to Todd Russell up in Palmer, Alaska. Good to see you on board again. And I point out to you, Todd, I'm in Ohio. And there's a few times when it was uh, much colder here than it was up in Alaska um, so far this winter. Well, uh, shout out to uh, Deputy Chief Jack Snyder out at Elko, Nevada uh, Fire Department. I want to make sure you're keeping all those giant cowboy boots safe out there in Elko, um, Deputy Chief. And if anybody's really curious about why I said that to him, Google Elko, Nevada boots and you'll see what I'm talking about. I also want to um, shout out and uh, mention that we have uh, some of our support team online with us here for the training today. Corey, who is our newest member of our support team, Katie and Lindsay are also out there. So those are some names if you've ever uh, communicated through our support department that you uh, may have communicated with one of those. So anyway, um, we still got a bunch of you online here and uh, we're waiting for your questions that you have them. And uh, since we have a smaller group, we might even uh, try to open up your microphone if you're, uh, you want to speak to everybody or, or ask a question verbally instead of putting it in. Hey, the, uh, Mark, it's Tom. Just want to give a shout out to yeah. Rodney uh, Sonderman out of Hershey, Pennsylvania. These guys out there, they do a bang up job and do put together a beautiful annual report using emergency reporting. And I know it's something that we share with, uh, with our customers. And so Rodney has a question he had sent to me directly, I think, because we were doing some uh, behind the scenes chatting. He would just like to see um, the uh, community connect feature in in uh, first two size up. Um, you know, uh, hey Rodney, and actually we we know Rodney as well. Great to have you on the call. Um, we can definitely do that as a follow up. We we ha didn't have it set up in this demo account uh, for this demo, but we can definitely show it to you um, after the call. Yeah, and, and just sort of describe how it works. Um, it's. It's a really simple, uh, limited access into First Two, so it's still the same platform and application, 
But what you do is you essentially provide a, a link um, that you can put on your website that you can send by email that allows residents or commercial property owners to log in to, um, to you know, a view of their property. And the view of their property will be really basic. It just allows them to add data and information that you guys want them to add. So it can be as simple as saying, hey, you know, tell us who, you know, if you have uh, elderly occupants or um, you know, anyone on oxygen or uh, you know, certain structural things you want us to know about your property um, on the residential side. And that, that's a customized form that we sort of create. Or on the commercial side, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can start to add and put in the system. And by them adding that in and saving it, it makes it accessible out in the field straight and first two size up like any other data source. And then we also manage all the back-end emailing and updating and all that sort of stuff. But Rodney, we can definitely set up another call with you and walk you through that feature as well. Okay, thanks guys. Hey, we have a question from Larry. Um, this connection with First Do Size Up, how well does it work with rural volunteer departments? Um, so Larry, you know, it, there's, there's really no, um, there's really no difference in terms of how the connector works depending on the type of, um, you know, territory that you, that you have. So, um, you know, the, this, what you saw today, it would be quite representative of what you'd have in your area. Um, but we were also happy to sort of, sh you know, show that to you. And if I, if okay. I didn't answer that, if, if, if you want some more clarification, maybe if you, did that answer the question, Larry? Yeah, Larry, you can just post in an answer to that. And uh, we have an also one posted here from Anthony Monks. Does ISO give credit for these types of pre-plan data sets? So maybe that's something you guys can uh, discuss with us. Uh, they they do. Um, it, we've, we have other clients um, who've had ISO audits, and what they've learned is it's a, being able to show that you have these sketches um, of the structures and you have all that um, baseline information about the structure can help you get full credit on the um, on the pre-plan section of your ISO uh, score. Okay, awesome. I can assure you that's a a, a big benefit for us in the department. I retired from. We had a multiple thick binders that we had paper copies of pre-plans in that was a real task to keep updated and distributed properly. Um, we could take all that data, get it into ER, and then pull it into your uh, software and access it through a mobile device out there to eliminate some of that stuff that we carry in our engines and to give us uh, better access to even additional information. So that's really, why I think it's excellent. It's a great point, Mark. Um, we hear it all the time. Just, you know, on the sort of most basic sense, not having to think about where the information you're you're looking for is and just knowing that it's all nice in one place and accessible literally with one to two taps of a screen uh, is really powerful and saves a ton of time and makes everyone's life a lot easier during a, during an event. Okay, awesome. So uh, we've got some time left here for anybody else that may have a question to post it up in there and we'll uh, get you an answer here. And I don't see any coming in as of right now. Pretty much a, a situation where we're going once, going twice. We'll give you a few more seconds to uh, push it out here. I'm, I'm sure that the one question I'm really surprised hasn't popped up. I want somebody to ask it is there's nothing free, right? So if somebody wants to know that information, maybe uh, we can make the connection. We have everybody's email address and can send you information directly from our folks, our partners here at First Do Size Up. Is that something yeah. you guys uh, want to address? No, okay, so Larry did ask. Here we go. It's, it's how much is the interface and uh, the service with First Do Size Up? Yeah, so great question. Uh, the, the way that pricing works with First Do it's just a subscription. So it's an annual subscription um, for your department and you get unlimited users within your department uh, on unlimited devices. So that's across using both the web and mobile applications. Um, the 
the there is a, a small fee for the actual connector um, that is handled on the ER side, but the, the actual number, the cost is based on the population size. So what we found is that it really scales nicely, you know, depending on sort of how, how many structures you have in your area, how many residents you have. Um, and we can certainly, you know, if anyone's interested in discussing that in sort of more detail, be more than happy to um, give you more specific uh, pricing. Okay, so Larry's asking about a specific population level. Let's let's do this. Can uh, Andreas or uh, Romy put it in the chat window? Your um, link to your company, a, a contact link, and maybe our um, attendees can select that link and uh, send you a message just directly to get better and, and more detailed information for their uh, districts. So, Mark, I'm. Um Gonna try and chat here, but I've had a. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm gonna put my um, email address in here, and that will be the best place uh, plus a phone number. Okay, so it's fairly simple. It's Andreas at firstdosizeup.com. That's Andreas A N D R E A S at firstdosizeup.com. And your phone number is 888-504-0016 or 917-692-2724. Thanks for that. Any other questions from anybody? Thanks for asking the, the question, Larry. We wanted to get that out there. Um, appreciate that. We'll give everybody a, a few more seconds here. And uh, if we don't get any more, we'll uh, go ahead and shut the presentation down and put this one in the books. Okay, it seems like we're, we're not getting any more. So I'm gonna uh, stop the recording and stop the presentation. Thanks everybody for attending today. We really appreciate it.